Hello again, everyone. It is your Black Knight. And today I'm going to fill up, fill up, I tell you, the agency garage. Because I was inspired. I was inspired, I tell you. Let's see, where is it? I saw the, the digital car addicts build of the Focalon Invisiad. And looking at the liveries and some of the options, I thought, you know what? This this could be a nice and very bizarre and very long story homage. Um, so we're going to read this first. Why well, choose between the warm blankie of nostalgia, which there's going to be some of that here, and the ragtag techno boner of post-humanistic futurism, which there's some of that really there too, but only it's retro techno boner kind of stuff. Okay. With the electric retro mashup of the Bolokan Envisage, you don't have to experience all the musky sex appeal of the free-loving, bare-backing, hairy-chested 70s with none of the gas crisis and, at the very same time, experience the rain-slicked, neon-lit, dystopian chick of, chic of your near-future holographic fantasies with none of the need to wake up and confront what you've done to the mattress. Wow. And it's got a money tech, and it's extremely expensive. And we're buying it. And while it comes in here, come on, where is it? where's the other one? The agency. <coughs> Excuse me. Back in 1993, when I was going to college for engineering, my senior project was to build an autonomous robot. It's something that could, you know, guide its way through a maze. And we, we built something, you know, I built, me and my partner built something that had optical sensors on it and it had physical sensors on it. And I spray painted it with a, a light purple because we went to the University of Scranton and our colors are purple and, and yellow. And I can't remember if that was the purple I picked or whether I thought it was going to be a darker purple, but I got that purple. It was purple and white with black on it. We decided the black was kind of necessary to make that kind of help with the... Uh, with the photo sensors, and there's these huge panels on it to protect the wheels because we thought we were going to have to go into the mazes to gather. And I built it very light. I built it out of plastic, mostly model plastic. Number one, I didn't have access to a oh there it is. I didn't have access to a machine shop. And you know I thought well if it was faster than every all the other robots we'd have a better time, and we wouldn't get caught up with them. And in the end result, they had us run through the mazes individually and mine mine never got through because although it worked very well the night before uh the day of by the time we walked it over from the lab to the gunster center uh something happened i think a couple wires pulled out for the wire the, i didn't have enough slack i guess in the uh the motor leads and then i had to try to actually it was cutting side the side of it off you know, and just get me the high gear like it was days of thunder just give me the high gear for the record we don't know if this is going to work even a little bit. It could be sitting there dead right now for all we know. But that's all I'd like to say. That's my disclaimer for the race under tension. Thank you. <laughs> this isn't getting turned off. Matthew, you can take off. They're connected. That's right. <laughs> and I put the wires back in, but then I lost the uh Somehow I lost the program and the whole thing just didn't work. There may soon come a day when you're greeted at the door, given your phone messages, mail and slippers by not a human, but a robot. Some say robots are the future. And at one area, college students are showing what they've learned about these electronic wizards. At the Egan Auditorium at the University of Scranton today, the school's physics and electronics engineering departments held its sixth annual robot races. <laughs> Students spent the semester developing and building robots that would negotiate a maze 
and retrieve an object. Only one robot, Chuck, sporting the flags of Italy and Poland, was successful. Four others failed to get out of the starting block. And I wasn't really, it was something that kind of haunted me for about 15 years until finally, uh, finally, at, when I was working at Lockheed Martin, they decided to have a robot competition where they gave us each a, a kit and had all the engineers get to form teams and do it all over again. I went and I looked up all of my notes on that robot, came up with the same circuits, and it would, it would, you know, autonomously run. It didn't quite have the turning radius for the maze. Note to self, it's probably a little less turn on the auto mode. <laughs> but we had the option of remote controlling it, and that's what I did. That's a, it's an interesting, that's another interesting story, because there was, uh, part of the maze actually had two remote controls with the buttons taped down in a tunnel. So if you went in there, it would try to take over your your, it would just feed it uh, control commands. So if, as the robot went there unattended, you know, if you weren't controlling it, then, you know, it would just turn around or give it another command. Interestingly enough, the way the program worked is that once you gave it a command, if it, it just didn't look for what command you're giving, it just looked for a signal. So this would actually allow the robot to drive through. So really, if you didn't pay too much of attention to it, it was actually a helper. You would just drive through the, uh, the maze. Uh, only two robots made it through the whole maze on that.
wish him money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. the fastest me and me and a couple other guys Rich, Richie Zielinski was the main helper there's a couple other P names on it but they I don't even first place the reluctant heroes hey. first place the reluctant heroes Seconds 50. Woo! Good job. All right. Good job. Thanks, man. Second place, the Maze Chasers. He was the main helper. There's a couple other P names on it, but they I don't even think they went to the dinner. But we're going to build this one up as an homage to the original robot because we can't. Let's go right to liveries. You go right to livery. You got this disruption. This is like the Atasha 01. This captures pretty much all the colors of the robot. It was white, black, and... and uh, and purple, that purple, almost exactly. Which, when I saw that, I'm like, "Hey, have to do it." And it is, it is an anime one, but hey, listen, it captures a lot of things here: lights, headlights. We could put purple lights on this, and we may do that later on. Neon kits, neon layout, front, back, sides, of course. Neon color. We're going purple. Now we gotta go back up and really start to build it like you're actually gonna build this thing. Armor. Well, that one needed more armor. Stock trim. Carbon. Can you even tell the trim at this point? Forged carbon trim. Can you see it with delivery? I'm gonna go forged. I like forged. Race brakes. Canards. Plastic. Carbon. Forged. Yeah, we'll go forged canards. Why don't we? Engine, rev it up. Fenders, trimmed fenders. Plastic fenders. I'm digging the stock fenders here with that little green and plastic piece there. Front bumpers, plastic lip. Secondary lip. I'm not seeing much difference there, not enough to spend money. The hood catches just mean you can't open the hood. Carb forged carbon, let's go forged carbon. Offset air intake, racing hood. Okay, so that's the racing hood. Racing hood with secondary induction, no forged down. No. Secondary induction hood, which this is an electric car, isn't it? This is a hydrogen car. Why would we need GT tuner hood? Let's see, you sucking the air up over the hood there. But really, the racing hood makes the most sense. See, Amani Tech, I have to put the remote control unit on it because this is going to be a robot car, right? Lights, we're going to get to that. Livery, we did. Plate, 27BFF, 20BFF, The sprunk kind of goes with it. We're going to give it the Black Knight. Usually, I go black on. 
yellow and black. They, I've seen where they supposedly have given us. Oh, there you go. All of our. Uh, all the thing. They could give it the Nuts 862, although that car was junked by the time uh, I was building this robot. I forget there was a purpose to that one. That's the, that's the General Lee. Black Beauty. Green car. Out of time. I should put out of time on it because I almost just ran out of time to get the whole thing done. That's kind of kind of fitting. The only other the only other uh, card that will you know share that with the DeLorean. So Proxmine, give it to Slicks. Respray. I don't think I want to change anything here. I really don't. Trim color, maybe. I don't think you can give it that light purple. Spinnaker purple, kind of midnight, bright, no. Yeah, none, none of that matches. I mean, the spinnaker is kind of close. Eh, we'll spinnaker it. But no, that's, that's too perfect as it is. The roof. Primary. Ooh. That's blinding. Stock carbon. Forged carbon. Yeah, there you go. Splitters? Oh, okay. We give you even more for the front end here. Forged carbon lip. Track lip with carbon. Track lip with forged carbon. Why not? We're not, we're not building a reasonable vehicle here. Spoiler! Now, there's a lot of spoiler options here. But this is the one we're going for. Yes, because that, that is reminiscent of the bumpers we would have where it's looking for, looking for, uh, you know, the walls, of the, of the wall follower. Uh, the wheels, i got to keep stocked. Those look really unique. It'd be nice if you could paint them, but, I mean, we're going to go with what we got. Sun strips. I don't generally go with a sun strip because it tends to be blinding if you're stuck in the car. But there is something to say with, you know, more purple. Suspension. Do we need to lower this? That almost to my eye looks like a waste of money. But if you're putting that wing on it. Wheel type, weak hill tires, enhancement, bulletproofs, smoke, purple. Windows, light smoke. Exit. Now we're not entirely done, like I said. Because, where are we? We can. I believe I still have a parking space. Somewhere down here where I could go in and give this the purple headlights. It's got an interesting feel to it. It feels very sharp, maybe a little slimy, I'm not sure. And is it B2? B1? I don't have, I can't give it purple headlights. Could we do that in... The auto shop. Could you give it custom lights in the auto shop? The auto shop is supposed to be able to do anything. For the most part. 
Do I have to move one? I mean, the purple lights is not that critical to me. Jesus, you're a loser. It does have a tuner look. I mean, this looks like it could fit here, doesn't it? Can we do that here? It might be a bit, might have been a waste of time. No, not this. Lights, I just missed it by one. Headlights, no, you can't. I guess we'll give it Xenon's the bare minimum. With the hydrogen in silence. I think because it is an Imani tech, we will put it back up here in the agency. This is probably the last car I'm going to get because I am so out of space. I just have a couple. I thought I had another space in the arena workshop. This might be, I might be down to one. There's one in the auto shop. And back in. Just to make sure it's reparked properly, and then we get in, we go out. And I think, I think you know what's next. If you're a regular, not really loaded. I have no idea how this is going to do. But I think there's going to be a lot of purple. Why don't I always just do the thing and then the thing and then the thing with the, the thing and the thing and the thing? The, the chili on hot lap root. It's the chili on hot lap root. And I think this is sports. Point to point GTA in case I need to get it unstuck. Sports. Noon because I'm not confident. Clear because I'm not confident. I really do think this, what happened to the, is it behind me there? Did I get, did I not hit the right, wait a minute, yeah, quit the job. Where is the, where is the tail on it? Did it not, did I not accept the, no, it's there. I was just blocking it perfectly, I guess. I thought I had the wrong, uh, wrong tail on it. All right, well, that wasn't a huge delay. Point point GTA again. Ready to play out the air stuff in the That wing is ridiculous. I don't think I lined this up right. It bounced ahead of time. Come on. Come on, drive up there. It's not driving up there. It, it hit a bounce and floated. It does feel floaty. I 
did exactly the same thing. I need to go a little more to the right. More to the left, rather. If I go more and more to the left, I mean, we're behind the train one way or another. Here. If I go, go from here and then kick it, then you get across. See, this is why I don't, I haven't done it in a G-Fred, an actual G-Fred yet. Because uh, you're much more screwed in a real G-Fred than you are. Didn't go well. It does seem to have the torque to do what it needs to do. Just stunt in here. We're just stunting out. I, that is totally the wing getting caught. The wing is a bad idea for Mr. Gay for curious, but I had to for the build. I mean, this is just what the build is. We're not beating the train that's already there. If I hit that, it would just pop it in the air and put me in the river. The river's not going to be my friend. Not gonna be a fast time. Just thinking, this car is full of hydrogen, so it shouldn't blow up really easily, right? Yeah, Fun fact: uh, when during the last three days before the robot race, I got four hours of sleep total. Uh, the afternoon after the robot race, I think I can't remember, like 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock, somewhere around there, I said, I'm going to take a nap. I think it was 4 o'clock I took the nap, and I woke up at 2 o'clock the next day. Or something like that. Or maybe those numbers were reversed. It was a lot of sleep. And I feel like I was tired for the next year. So I cannot recommend sleep deprivation. I really, really can't. Although it is a great story. Seems to have the power. It's floaty though. It hits, bounces, and floats. You think it'd be really heavy as an electric, but if it's depending on the hydrogen tanks as opposed to huge batteries, I don't know enough about the car on which it's based. But it looks like this is going to have enough torque to do it. It'll do it. Ooh. Wee! Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <coughs> oh yeah. Again, it's very bouncy, very floaty, so it doesn't like this. But it has enough torque and traction, yeah, to recover. It's not an optimal Tiliad car, but it'll do it. It's an adequate Tiliad car. It's an adequate Tiliad car. It's an adequate Tiliad car. We say that, we haven't gone down the hill yet. And we wiggle our way, and okay, now this, uh, this is the part I'm a little scared of. Bouncy, bouncy, float, float, bouncy. Kick it! Oh, we're too far to the right. It's now it's hooking to the right. This is going to, whoa, but it, it 
reflects and jets itself back up onto roughly the main approach. Interesting recovery. Should be a train. I don't see a train. No, there's a train. Alright, it's the first time I've ever done a wall ride through there, I think. That worked. Now let's just not dunk ourselves. This could be a good rail rider if you not lined up just right, but wandering on me. Oh, there you go, there we go. A good few seconds of it there, I think. Come on. Getting ready for the dismount. Don't launch me here. And dismount. I've had worse. Sometimes, you know, the whole idea is that you get an inspiration. I mean, that's Really, that's going to be the definition of what my channel is, especially going forward. I'm no longer pursuing like the big number kind of thing. That's that's from my youth back in back when I created the channel back in October of 2010. I didn't, I wasn't like you know going in sure that I would be a superstar, but I thought it was a possibility. You know, now I've taken on the hobbyist attitude of, I'm going to do what's fun here and do what I'm inspired to do. Truth be told, with, with regard to GTA stuff, I'm running out of ideas. I mean, I think we've seen enough heists. You know? But still, there's always going to be some kind of racing, I guess. But they still do. Always do some kind of build video going on. If there might be some huge gaps there because I'm out of parking. Boy, if if uh, Rockstar gives us parking, that would be such a huge boon to this channel. Because I buy stuff to keep it, you know? I'm a collector. Certainly keeping this one because there's a lot of memories built into it. Yeah, not a bad run, not a great run. So let's pop the doors. And it's, I guess it's a, a fuse, fuel cell EV kind of thing. I always go back to where the, uh, the controls used to be. Got some forged carbon there. The big wing, but you can still get into those, still pop open so you can see, you know, the, the huge fuel, you know, the hydrogen fuel tanks that go into the fuel cell that drive the electric motors. Which I guess that's an electric motor? Or is that like the, the, the carbon processing thing? I have no idea what any of it's supposed to be. You can see it's got a racing, a racing layout to the interior from the get go. And so. Very unique car. Will it be any good racing? Probably not. Not seeing this as, you know, especially for stunt racing. I think being a semi-electrical kind of thing. Where's that car? We don't have none. It's going to be limited in top speed. I can't remember where it was in Ruffy's list. 
I remember making a note that this was not going to be the next, you know, best thing. The Niobe is the next best thing. I almost could talk there. It only makes sense from a certain perspective. And that is a perspective that I have. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night. Yeah!